70 WMEI, partly sunny, very hot. About a 20% chance of a scattered shower during the course of the afternoon. About a 20% chance of rain tonight. Otherwise, it'll be just sprinkly cloudy. Woo! Yeah! Then 70 WMEI, all blue, Saturday. Rufus and Jay's 21 minutes after 9 o'clock. Uh, look, my brother James, I talked to him a minute ago over at the 1107 Patton Avenue. Uh, they need help. They need help if you would like to go back. Uh, need someone to spray. Yeah, spray for roaches. Spray for roaches. Spray for roaches. Uh, what the, you need some some of that rage. There you go. And all of that kind of kind of stuff to get back in, the, in them cracks, you know, because they 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 hide in them cracks and lay in wait on you. Well, they say you know you're in the ghetto when you cut the lights on and your pets run. <laughs> <laughs> you're right in the middle of the ghetto. Oh, yeah. Hello, Jay Rufus. What's up? All right, there. Yeah. Well, y'all, y'all gonna be cleaning up over there. I'm gonna come over there and help y'all. You are, man. I got man. the real equipment to do it with. They, well, why don't you just go on over there? Huh? Go on over there. I'm gonna go over there and help. You go. Y'all gonna be over there, too. Yeah, now, you go ahead. We'll see you when you get there. <laughs> <laughs> Memphis has two kings, Elvis Presley and Rufus Thomas. But Rufus was first. As a DJ, he played Elvis's records on black radio before anyone. Then Rufus had his own hit records, Walking the Dog, The Funky Chicken. He gave soul music, rhythm and blues, its start in Memphis. And when soul spread north, to Philadelphia, Chicago, and to Detroit where it became Motown, pop music was changed forever. In the summer of 1999, I went on a journey to find out what had happened to all the great soul stars like Rufus. Where were they now? How were they surviving? First stop, WDIA, Memphis's legendary radio station, where Rufus does a weekly show with Jay Davis. I knew I was in the right place because they were playing Dark End of the Street by James Carr, one of my favorite soul songs. This is Roger Hi, Rufus. How are you? Believe it or not, Rufus was 82 when we first met him and still performing with his daughter, Carla. Carla came to New York in February of 92, and she and James Carr did one show together. It was the greatest show I ever saw, and that was it for James Carr. Dark end of the street, James Carr. The other one is you got my mind messed up. Baby, you got my mind messed up. Yeah. Uh, Pouring that. water on a drowning man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Boy, yeah, he was bad. He's good. No doubt about it. He's one of the one of the finer singers. Yeah. That do yeah. what to do with his voice. Oh, Something else. Tonight, Tonight we gonna meet. At the dark end of the tree.
will skin you in. No, when you got that feeling in your soul. Wait a minute. Let me tell you. Saw Bobby Walmart. He was fishing with a left hand pole. Y'all know no. Wicked picket was giving Joe Tex a look so cold. Uh. He was fussing about who wrote the song that love you saved. Wilson Pickett, the wicked Pickett, the legendary wild man of soul. No one thought he could ever be tamed, and they were right. <laughs> this is Gail Bird. Hi. Well, yeah. Who's waiting Gail. on you? Yeah, this is uh, I'm Roger. You're the Chris. director, right? He's the director. Yeah. They're the direct she's the director. I'm sort of the producer and the You're writer. the one with the money. <laughs> Not really. I can't. He's your instigator. Okay. I'm the guy. I'm sort of the instigator. I, I went to the last couple of Rhythm of Blues Foundation dinners. You yeah. went to the Rhythm of Blues Foundation. Yeah, right. And the concert is fantastic. Yeah. You know? yeah. And in the afternoon, all the people would come uh, to the press reception. Yeah. And it would be like a big reunion. This yeah. year we had Dee Dee Warwick and Gladys Knight yeah. and Garnett Mims. Yeah, Garnett Mims there? Garnett Mims. Channel? Yeah. And, uh, the, oh, you didn't have Martha Reeves, though. Did you? Not this year, last oh, year. Oh, good. I, I mean, bad. <laughs> <laughs> we won't get into that. Uh, no. And the Manhattans. Yeah. And, right, it was really terrific. And in the year before, we had great people, too. And I kept saying, no one's filming this. No one's filming this. we got to put everybody on film because they're such great people. I have to ask you a question. How do you go about being able to get all the stuff you have to get done done without any problems? Charm. Yeah, Charm. just charm. No, Jewish. 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 That's what it is. Jewish. <laughs> I got him now. I got him now. Boy, I knew I'd get him. <laughs> Wilson brought us to the New York photo shoot for the cover of his first new album in 10 years. I got one thing I want to tell you. You look so good to me. I want to say something to you about night misery. Yeah, but you move. Yeah. You move, you see. You don't have to dance if you can move. You got the move. Okay, put it back in here now. Hmm? You can. Okay. See this? Isn't that pretty? Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. You know, this costs over six thousand dollars. <laughs> Feel that. Oh, wow. And the trousers that is that amazing. Show me, show me. I'm one of the best dress entertainers out there. Yeah. yeah. What do you yeah. mean, one of Tell them it's nothing for me. It's nothing for me to pay over a thousand dollars for a shirt, right? Absolutely. We have all but two songs mixed. Whenever you want to hear them, yeah. You just say the word. I want to hear something. Okay. <laughs> Cornbread. <laughs> it's a cornbread. Huh? How do I do it? 
<laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> a lot of singers can't do that. You know. Uh, uh, actually, almost no singers can yeah. do that. They'll blow their voice. <laughs> they blow their voice. Actually, only you can do that. I don't know. You got some gospel birds out there can do yeah. can do the cornbread. Can James Brown do it? No. Not like you. No. James Brown sang mostly from here. I sang from here. Yeah, it sounds That's like a difference. <laughs> We got a brother in the mind who's, uh, I've known, man. Don't do it. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'll take, it, I'll take it down a notch. Okay. About 30 years. Oh, my God. <laughs> I lied, but I'll say it anyway to satisfy you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in Ike's house this morning, we got the infamous, well, infamous is a bad word. Oh. The famous. Oh. The famous. Yeah. Sam Moore. Yeah. The Sam and Dave fan. All right. What's up, Blessy? Hello, Bubba. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Bubba. How you doing, man? Hey, you call me 5 o'clock in the I morning. Know. You call me at I my home it. at 5 o'clock in the morning. At home at 5 o'clock. I did, didn't you, I? You asked me a question. Yeah. You said, Bless, were you asleep? And I said, yes. Now, usually when people ask you something like that, they say, well, look, call you back and we'll talk later, Bless. You know what you did? You went on to talking. <laughs> you didn't feel no feelings for me. Now, in my defense. You have one? Yes, I do. <laughs> Go for when it. When we were in Paris, France. Yeah. You disturbed me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you dirty. You disturbed me. I didn't. You don't take it serious. Yeah, but were you sleeping? <laughs> so, oh, man, are you ready for the show Sunday? I'm here. Yeah, you know I'm going to do that. I appreciate it. Even if I... Even if I don't like it, you know, and I don't want, you know, and you're not paying me, you know. Uh, look, look, Sam, Sam, hold up. Sam, let's take a break. Uh, we're going to take a break, y'all, with Sam Moore, with, with loose with loose lips, Sam Moore in the house. I got it, I got it, I got it. I think I have to tell you, nobody wears sunglasses like you. Well, you are the best sunglass wearer. You should do ads for sunglasses. Secret, let me tell you a secret behind this. This glass was secure to blank. Mm -hmm. Because I was so shy. I was scared when I first did Dick Clark. That's right. I was scared to death. I put these shades on. Yeah. It's like an ostrich with his head in a hole. Yeah. I thought I was safe behind those shades. I can't shades. believe. I swear. Seriously. You were Seriously. shy? Yes. I was, I Michelle, he was shy? Saw, I thought the whole world saw me All right. trip. This is my brother. Yeah. You, know, you better. You know. We've been doing this I, a long time. A long time. You know what I was thinking about that? Motown had the Temptations, but Stax Records had Sam and Dave. They were the most popular group on the label, and their music has lasted 30 years. But the pair broke up in the early 70s, and Sam was suddenly on his own. 
See? Yeah. There it is, that yeah. New York skyline. Yeah. And to the New York skyline. <laughs> I used to stay right around the corner there, Ron. Right? Yeah? Where? Yeah. Right at the hotel there. What hotel is that? It belonged to the Japanese, so it had a funny name to it. Uh -huh. But you only paid uh, $8 a night at that time. $8 a night? Yes. Is that when you were performing, when you were in town, or just when you were staying here? No, when I was staying here. Uh huh. Yeah, this is during the drug that, days. That's the drug during the drug days? Yeah, right there. I, I, I got put out from across the street. Uh -huh. Then I went across, came over here, and I stayed there for two or three days, and then. Uh, uh, I got put out, and uh, then I started working these streets here. Working them? Yes. I was selling drugs all up and down here. What year was this? 72, 73. Mm -hmm. 73, yeah. Did people know who you were when you were doing that? Oh, sure. Yeah? And they eventually found out because you, you, don't try to, you don't try and hide after. Well, but that's you when know. you grew the beard, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, with the, the glasses and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, what kind of drugs did you sell? The same as the Baluch, Baluch, Baluch heroin and cocaine. Yeah. But I started with the full-blown heroin at first. Then to cut it and mix it up and everything, I went to the other. Yeah. And, uh, this was my, this was, mm -hmm. yeah, this was my, uh, my domain at that time. You weren't married then? No. How long have you been married? Since 82. But I've been clean now. Since April of 82. Of 82. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. How, did you, uh, how did you finally clean up? Tricked him. You tricked him? I tricked him. I fought the devil. How I realized, well, I got in a position to be in total control, literally, of his money, his drugs, his proximity, his everything. And that I had to play hardball and tough love and do all that stuff. And mm -hmm. Because I knew that it wasn't him, the person that I was controlling. It was the demon that was controlling him and I had to, in essence, beat it. When I get up to you, we'll be going great. But by the time I leave you, it comes to our coming down. And I go into a spin. I'll be going into a spin. Let's keep that spin is going. In. Okay. You look good. White opera coat, right? White opera coat. You still want to do the pink, Mary? You want pink opera coat or the white opera coat? Do you want to layer? Or just one? Light. Do you want to layer? Mm -hmm. Okay. And blade the top out mm -hmm. and, and the bottom one out. Okay. So, and, and put a tape up top and bottom so we'll know because we do it very fast. Okay. Um, get me some powder. I think I'm okay. Oh, I, I hate to be so rushed. Mm -hmm. You're always tripping me. Don't let anybody, if I say something, don't let anybody change it. Okay. I've been here in New York. I appreciate that so very much. Thank you. Oh boy. I'm Mary Wilson of the Supremes, the original Supremes.
Florence, Diane, Mary. Of course, I was always in the middle. <sighs> Thank you, I love you too. <laughs> this is the 40th anniversary of the Supremes. Florence, Diane, and I, with Betty, started 40 years ago. <laughs> and, uh, and so I decided, since it was the 40th anniversary, why not tour this entire year as Mary Wilson of the Supremes and the Supremes, however we wanted to do it, and I decided to bring along to you. The Swinging Supremes, the most famous of all the girl groups. They went up against the Beatles and had about as many number one records. Like all the great Motown acts, the Supremes recorded their hits at the tiny Hitsville Studios in Detroit. There's Diana Ross on the left, Florence Ballard on the right, and Mary Wilson in the middle. After Diana broke with the group and Florence died, Mary went off on her own and she fought for the right to use the group's name. Now she tours all the time. Um, what about, let's, let, you know what, let's do, let's do, love job. sounded fantastic during the sound Thank show. Thank you. And you know, I've known you for a while, but I haven't ever seen you do your show. Oh, was, this is your first time This is my first me? time, and I was really blown away. I'm, I'm a well-kept secret. You are? <laughs> <laughs> no, I am. Why are you such a well-kept secret? Oh, well, we don't know, but that won't be for long. Uh-huh. If I have anything to do with it, it won't be for long. You're, you wrote two books. Yes. And they're going to come out as one edition soon? Yes, we're combining the two books. Oh, my God. We're combining the two books, uh -huh. and it'll be out this fall. Are you changing them at all, or adding anything to it? No, them? maybe uh, one chapter. In fact, uh -huh. I should be at home writing my chapters right now. Do you like writing? Yeah, I do. do you I, like in, I, in fact, I'm in school at NYU to uh, learn how to really write my own story, so I won't have to hire a professional writer. Is that right? Yeah. So. When did you go back to NYU? I've been in three years now. Are you going to get a degree? Yeah. I'm getting yeah. my, my bachelor's. You're yeah. kidding. When? Well, that's a, that's a big question. When? <laughs> yeah, my mom, uh, Johnny May, couldn't read and write. Uh -huh. and, uh, and so she always stressed to get education. And uh -huh. we became famous just uh, at the time I was going to go to college. Florence, Diane, and all of us, you know. And, and so um, I couldn't go. And now my children are all grown up. And... Um, so I decided to go back. Do you like singing the lead on the songs now? Well, you know, I'm, I'm not so much. I know we always, I always talk about lead, sing, I'm singing lead, but when I was singing the background, I was having fun. You know, I, I, I always said I was a star in the background. You know, I didn't think I was a background singer, but that's what the public relegated us to. But it's obvious I, from listening to you tonight that you have a lead singer's voice. Well, well, that's something that I've always said, and then sometimes I hate I say it because it seems like I'm kind of, 
uh, saying that, you know, I should have been singing lead or Florence should have been singing lead. And that's really not what I mean. Um, our, we all had great voices, you know, and uh, we, um, you know, I, I, it was, Diane was chosen to sing the lead, so that was fine. Uh, now I have my chance, and so I'm doing it. But, you know, it doesn't really matter as long as I'm on stage. Here's one of my favorite Supreme songs. Actually, it was Diane's swan song. And I surely hope it comes true someday. Diana Ross was the ugliest thing I'd ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and we used to ride her in the station wagon with the turned around facing the cars back in the back seat. Uh -huh. And we'd have the other girls up in the front, you know, in, in, in the Falcons. We had this big station wagon. Put Diana Ross in the back facing the cars. <laughs> yeah. And now, Diana Ross is one of the most beautiful women on the face of earth. What happened? How in the hell would I know? Did you think she was going to be such a big star? No, she was a natural. She was a natural? Yeah, nobody had a voice like Nana Ross, and she knew how to use it. Would you say Aretha Franklin is the female Wilson Pickett? No. No? no. And I ain't the female with uh, Aretha Franklin either. <laughs> man, man, what's crazy about me? She just gave a birthday party, big birthday party at her state in Detroit. That was about four, three or four months ago. And she had me and Bobby Blue playing. Yeah? There you for doing the music. She uh -huh. had all of her guests. Yeah. Everything you can eat. She loved to cook, right? Uh -huh. So I'm out there singing, and then I decide to walk into the audience. Like I come down off the stage, and Aretha Frank, you don't never see her, you know. She'll be there, and you don't never see her. She Is that right? Greet, no, she don't greet her guests. Oh. She don't do nothing. So I said, myself, I wonder where's Aretha Frank. Then I'm out there singing, and all of a sudden, somebody gets up out of a chair with some glasses on, some jeans and a shirt, and with a ring. And she gets on the mic and starts singing with me. Wow. And the people loved it. They loved it. And I said, you old devil, you. <laughs> <laughs> what you doing, Brother Pickett? <laughs> <laughs> Tell them the story about Aretha. I, I got no more stories. Just Aretha at the piano when she was pregnant, when you came over to see her. Oh, yeah. She's <laughs> bloom, 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 bloom. Pregnant, bloom, bloom, bloom. bloom. <laughs> bloom, 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 bloom. Ah, ah, ah. So, uh, Aretha, I see you pregnant. Who baby is it? 
It ain't none of yours, is it? Blue, blue, blue. Blue, 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 blue. Sure ain't none of yours. <laughs> hey, man, I'm finished. Writers and publishers get paid every time a song broadcasts but anywhere. Performers don't. But performers have never, and there is, the, as I say, the Rome Convention. It has been on the Hill many times, and the broadcasters have repeatedly and consistently blocked it. So it's a very serious issue. It's one that was very near and dear to Frank Sinatra's heart. Frank Sinatra did not want to close his eyes on, on, in this world without seeing a performance right past. Just walk up there and go up to the desk and say, I came to get my money. No, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm telling you in accounting, I'm going to visit our money. Uh, why don't we both go see Bob? Both you know what? Why don't we take the crew and go no, see? No, <laughs> no, Let me have this question. Here, I have this question here about this statement. George, you don't know what you're saying. They're putting wow. that in. Oh, my God. I, I, oh, I can just see them turning oh, gray. I, gray? Ah. You must understand, in the, in the 60s, this was at the, the pinnacle edge of Segregation? Mm -hmm. okay. May I interrupt you for a moment and say that during the course of some of the litigation, some of the things we're doing, our attorney one day turned to me and he looked at Sam and he said, yeah. what do you expect? You signed a record contract before you had a right to vote. Yeah. Hello? Okay. Light bulb. So Sam, how have you survived? I'm the most luckiest and I'm the most blessed. person that you would ever want to find, one among. And you know what his nickname is? Ask Isaac. Isaac calls him Bless. Yeah. Blessed. Yeah. Blessed. Yeah. Blessed. Yeah. yeah the blessed. Bless is, yeah. Bless is his I nickname. I mean, the odds, are not, the odds have not been with you. How have you done it? I don't know. I think I got something to do. And, and Isaac, I was, I was talking about it today, and he was whispering, and he was whispering in my ear, and I was giving him a hug. He said, you got one more thing to do, Bless. I said, yeah. He said, I said, you know what it is? He said, no, but it's that time. When you, and you start thinking about those kind of things. You start thinking and saying, and Joyce said it the other day, I, I think she put it well. She said, you know, you got one more good Sam and Day, Sam, uh, soul man in you. And I do. I got one more. And then, and, I, and like I said, she put it best. Then you can walk away, hold your head up and say, you know what? I did it. So hold on. that don't you yeah i do then seven and the i all blue saturday rufus and jay saturday morning with willie clayton and we got caught up you ever been caught up me and my wife's best friend got caught up <laughs> messing around jay i ain't gonna do no stuff like jay that. i like look, look at me i got you. you you got me yeah all right you okay. look at me real good i got you can't mm -hmm. you just look at me and see that i'm a i'm a self-made man you you a self-made man? I'm a self-made man. Made yourself. Hey. Well, I got one question for you. What? Who interrupted you? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody interrupted you. <laughs> Carla Thomas, Rufus's daughter, met me for lunch on Beale Street in Memphis. He was talking about some song and he goes, I don't know why they like those blues songs. They're so sad. They're all very weepy. <laughs> oh, I don't like those songs. He likes fast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not Wilson, but that's, that's a feeling, you know. <laughs> we went to Howard together, Roberta and Donnie and I. I didn't realize you went to college. I, I did some courses in the summer. Uh huh. And so I got out in like but maybe about three and a half years. Wow, great. What was your degree in? In English. Uh huh. Well, I went to Tennessee State and graduated from there. Uh huh. And then I went to Howard for grad school. 
But by the time I started really getting into trying to get a master, right. I was getting mastered in traveling. And I really began to love that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was but going you overseas had, and... But when you went to college, you already had hit songs. Yeah. Carla Thomas had her first big hit at age 16. Carla had her own hits, hits with Rufus, and hits with Otis Redding. Before Aretha Franklin was named the Queen of Soul, it was Carla who was the crown princess. But it was a long time since anyone had heard her incredible voice. And like most of the people we were looking for, there was almost no record of her on film after age 25. This is it. This is Stax. There it is. That's where it used to be. Would you believe that? Stax Records was Memphis's answer to Motown. Rufus and Carla, Otis Redding, Sam and Dave, and the Staple Singers were just a few of their big name acts. But in 1975, the label went bankrupt and the famous Stax Studios were demolished. It was an old theater. Oh, like a movie theater. And you walk down, you see how it went down? Go down into the A Studio. Do you miss Otis? Oh, very much. Yeah. I don't know how to describe Otis Redding. He brought with him an energy that was different because it, it was different from Memphis. He brought that Georgia energy. <laughs> yeah, that Macon, Georgia energy. That country, country, blues, folk, soul. So when he came down to visit, he came in the studio. Just so happened I was here from school. And I just went and sat down. And he just told everybody what to do. Everybody what to do. So you play da 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 and you play he could play the drums, you know. He had that, that creative thing for the horns. Uh -huh. And he it just began to blossom, that Memphis sound with him. He got so carried away at the mere fact that he could create in that studio. You know, sure. it's really like all of us. We could go in and say, Can you do da 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 dee 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 da and they could do it. I didn't know I could sing. I always sang with a group. I didn't know I could sing solo. So sometimes the teachers would leave out of the room and we'd have talent shows. <laughs> oh boy. And so I would just, they said, okay. They said, come on, sing, sing, sing. And I said, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, whatever was the hit. Yeah, and we'd all just, and then we'd go run and go sit down when the teacher would come back. <laughs> and I think that's really how it started. So then they started having talent show. And then I, I got some of my friends and we put together a little group. And started doing, and we were, we weren't even in junior high yet. And the high school students knew about us. And at the PTA meeting, we would sing. And that was the start. And then I joined the Teen Towners. Just one Yeah. Which song you do? I've got to find baby here. Guys, all this thing turn on. Hey. Hey, tell us, you tell me see what we talk about. John has baby. played this song, but it's been a while. Oh, mm -hmm. baby, you are so oh. good to me, baby. So I'm not doing baby. It's baby. Baby and Jesus. I'm doing both. I'm so excited. We want you to do it. <laughs> B. A. B.
across town from Stax is another famous studio, Royal. This is where Al Green and Ann Peebles recorded their hits with producer Willie Mitchell for High Records. When we got there, Ann was waiting for us with Don Bryant, her husband and collaborator. Now, how did the Stax and the High people all mix together? Well, we did. I mean, although it was a, a, a competition, per se, uh -huh. with the records, uh, but the musicians, because a lot of Stax musicians would come over here sometime and play, uh, play for us. Yeah. Never really got to meet Sam and Dave, uh -huh. per se. I mean, we did shows together, but I never met them. And just recently, I really, really got to know him. Sam? Uh, yeah. Sam, yeah. We did a sh uh, tour. Was that last year? We was abroad. Mm -hmm. And that's when I really sit down and talk to him and found out the beautiful person he really is. And I, I think he says some things to me that will forever uh, hold in my mind and in my heart and things that he said about Don and I never knew that they knew Don the way he knew Don. Come and, together like that, yeah. I think that's good. And I said, well, you know, Don and I are still married and he fell on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to yeah. sing three songs Saturday night, right? Sunday night, right? Now I'm going to do two songs. Oh, two songs, mm -hmm. which two? Well, they requested uh, breaking up somebody's Break home. Up. Lying around home alone on a rainy night like this. Starving for your love, hungry for just one kiss. Mm -hmm. Every rain drop my head against my window pane. Your name is still. I got no way to turn. Tired of being alone. Feel like breaking up somebody's home. I know it's useless hanging on when you belong to someone else. Yeah. Can't control my feelings, y'all. Cause after all, I didn't make myself die. Tonight I cried so hard I believe I caught the chill Yeah Can't control the vibration My heart just won't stand still No, I won't Thank you. It was great to see the Shy Lights again. There's still the sound of Chicago soul going back 40 years. It's not every group that has all their original members, and they're still performing all the time. They've come to New York to pick up an award and see some old friends. When we made those concerts, we would never open up our uniforms. we keep them in the boxes. And that's the most exciting thing of your life, I yeah. tell you, for an entertainer. We have a uh, squirrel say, we open up now? Nope, nope, nope. Ain't, ain't time for us to go on yet. Mm -hmm. We was headliners then. Yeah. So I said, fellas, now it's time. Open up the box. <laughs> Man, we <laughs> open up the box and put them clothes on. We looking in the mirror for 15 yeah. minutes yeah. ourselves. <laughs> we that's went out on the stage. Mm -hmm. We couldn't sing a note. <laughs> no. The people hollered for look oh. like for 20 minutes. The audience went wild. We had what uh, color was? What color? That's was the it? ones we had on the, the right of letter album. Uh-huh. You know with, with the robes. robes. Uh -huh. 
Oh, yeah. Twenty. Oh, this them pretty this colors, a rainbow colors, colors, and one, 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 yeah. uh, suit, one pants leg was pleated all the way up here, and the other pants leg started to pleat right here. You remember? Those were ahead at the time. And and they open up. There we go. Man, we went out there on that stage, man, man. The guy, they turned the lights back off. Get, we had to go back off the stage. The motors got scared. Get them off the stage. Get them off. Get them off the yeah. stage. We haven't even sung a note. We, we haven't even sing. opened our mouth. Yeah. You know, that was the most exciting yeah, thing about career to me. get them to, to calm down. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the legendary Shiloh. Chicago. Come on over here, fella. Come on, man. Get on. Now, we want to know one thing. Do you ever get tired of singing this song here? No. You all ever get tired of hearing us sing this song? Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Come on. Let's hear it again. Come on. See, right. that was done in Chicago because there was a whole bunch of people that had a sound. And, and everybody had a different sound. Whereas Motown had a sound. You could take any piece of it and put it in. Philadelphia had a sound. You could stack staying down in Memphis. Had it. But Chicago had a variety of sounds. You have to hand it to Jerry Butler. Originally the front man for Curtis Mayfield and the Impressions, 
He went out on his own and became a star. He was so cool, they called him the Iceman. In his 50s, when most of his peers had packed it in, Jerry went to college and became a force in Chicago politics. Yeah. And they want to know if you're really the mayor of Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not the mayor of Chicago. But I'm he might the, as well be. I'm the Cook County Commissioner, and the mayor and I are very good friends. We don't want any trouble. Shalom is the word. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, have just finished an autobiography titled Only the Strong Survive. But I've been blessed because most of it has been positive for me. We talk about in the book, though, some of the folks who didn't get this far, who didn't have the good fortune that I've had. We talk about Otis Redding and Little Willie John and Sam Cooke and some of those guys who were just extraordinary talents, who for some reason the creator decided that he would take them sooner. Oftentimes, uh, we don't write our own history. And so it gets screwed up. So we've tried to get ours down just in case somebody wants to screw it up. <laughs> I remember my first love affair. Somehow I know that a whole darn thing went wrong. Mother gave me some great advice, so I thought I'd take it and pass it on. I can still hear the lady sing somewhere in my mind. Boy, boy, boy. Oh, she is sitting out there all alone. Crying your eyes out. Cause the woman you love is gone. There's gonna be some whole lot of trouble in your life. Hey. Listen to me, get up off your knees. Cause only the strong survive, the lady said. Only the strong survive. Only the strong survive. Hey, you gotta be strong. You better hold on. Don't go Whoa, around with your head hung down. Say, so wouldn't let the little girl know. Made me feel like a clown. I say a whole lot of girls looking for a good man like you. Hey, but you'll never meet him if you give up now and say your life is through, the lady said. No, only the strong survive. the theme can be applied to almost anything. So whenever you feel you're right, you think you might have to stand up for yourself. I wish you'd do it with this in mind. And you come on and sing with the same. Yeah. Only the strong survive. Only the strong survive. Hey, you gotta be strong. Said you gotta hold Everyone loves Isaac Hayes, and it wasn't hard to get his friends to turn out for a tribute show to him. We love you, we love you, we love you, we love you. You gonna wear a baseball cap? Yeah. With the outfit? Yeah. I but love I, it. I'll take it off when I go on stage. No, you gotta take off, cause I love it. I know, but no, I'm not, no, 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 he and David Porter wrote most of Stax's greatest hits in the 60s. He wound up losing the rights to those songs in a 1977 bankruptcy, but Isaac came back strong 
as a popular radio show host, actor, and author. So I'll catch you there. Okay. Bring a leg. I'm trying. Hold on, hold on one second. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. When something is wrong with my baby, can you hear me? Something is wrong with me. Listen. And if I knew she was worried, then I would feel that same. understand me you got people that go around and they talk about women and they say they say bad things about her but she ain't no good but you see I, I, I got a fine woman somewhere she tells everybody Sam Sam is my man and if she If she's got a small problem, oh, I know I'm gonna help her solve them. Something is wrong. So now, with my baby. Something is wrong with my baby. arranged it. He taught it to David and myself. He would sit down on the side of the piano and he would play. And he said, Sam, I want you to go here. And he would sing Dave's part. And while he did that, I would stand up and I would say, oh, babe. So just before I go, I want to take my time, no matter how long it takes. <laughs> oh, baby! Talking about my baby. Oh,
Soul Survivor. Soul Survivor. We got Soul Survivor on there? No, no, we don't have it. Soul Survivor's up top. Oh, it's up top. Oh, yeah, okay. It's harder now. It's harder now. Top is harder. I know. Now. And that's it. That's about it. Right. Uh huh. Did you have a good summer? Summer. I haven't seen you all summer. I had a good one or two. Yeah. I had a good fall, and that ain't all. <laughs> I got your number. What was it like growing up in Chicago in that time? It was an interesting neighborhood. Uh, Ramsey Lewis was uh, raised there. Curtis Mayfield, um, Major Lance, my younger brother Billy. All of us wound up in music, coming from within maybe a three or four block radius of each other. And what about these people like Wilson Pickett? Well, Pickett was a different kind of guy, because Pickett was, he came out of a group. You know, uh, the I, yeah, you know, so uh, he was out there uh -huh. just about the same time that we started. Not as Wilson Pickett, though, but with the with the Falcons. Right. But you're like a, you're the, the Iceman. You're the Iceman. And he's like a, a blast of heat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I'm not going to mess with that. I'll just let that go for whatever it is. The great thing about the Soul Music family is that every year they get together and party. Tonight, Mary Wilson is presenting an award at the annual Rhythm and Blues Foundation dinner. I, I have to say this one thing. Jerry, come forward, please. Jerry Butler, before I let him speak, <laughs> before I let him speak, I got to tell you a little a secret. At Motown, when we used to record back there in the 60s, we were not supposed to go and record with any other record company. But Jerry Butler took myself Florence Ballard with the Andantes to Chicago and we recorded one of his songs. Sorry, Barry, you, I guess you never knew this. Anyway, so we recorded and he paid us. What did you pay us? About $10? About $5 more than Motown did. <laughs> Here he is, Mr. Jerry Butler, ladies and gentlemen. Your precious love So lonely 
And so do for that what love will do. And darling, I was so surprised. Oh, when I first realized that you. Word fooling me, and of all the little things that I'll ever ever want in this whole wide world, it's for someone like you to see right now. So lonely, girl. Well, that's what love. Well, that's what love will do. something together mm. right mm -hmm. and then after you get married mm -hmm. you got to do them same things to keep her going to the movie walking in the park yeah okay going that... swimming every now and then oh you you tell her these nice things oh. and, and and you mean them uh -huh. see now if you don't think you're gonna mean them don't see them yeah. like when I won that lottery and I called my wife oh yeah Jay yes <laughs> I don't think that. No. I did. I, uh, no. I told her when I won that lottery. <laughs> I told her, I said, baby, I won. I said, I got it. I won the lottery. How, mu said, how, how much, much did you win? I said, 2.5. 2.5 mil? She said, you got it. I said, I got it right here in my hand. I said, pack your clothes, baby. Pack your clothes. Pack your clothes. She said, you want me to pack my summer clothes or my winter clothes? I said, pack all of your clothes. Baby. Pack them all. Pack everything you got. Pack everything you got. Because I want you out that house when I come home. <laughs> <laughs> See, you got to say things that you mean. <laughs> Soul music is a feeling. And you put a little extra emphasis on what you're singing. That's soul.
Something else, huh? Something else. Yeah, yeah. something else. Oh, buddy. Ugh. I went, oh, my God. I, li I looked at my watch. I said, wait a minute, fam. This is not your tribute. Get <laughs> off the stage. <laughs> Enjoy saying, get the glasses. I get the glasses and get off the stage. Oh, my God. For him, tribute to Ike. Anything to show my appreciation. Who's the black grimy dick because the sex machines are all the shit? Stop. Right. Who is a man that would risk his neck for another man? Stop. And you dig it? Captain walk up out the window, say you're on a fire. Right on. They said it's got seven bad mouths. Shut your mouth. What's up, my chef? He's a complicated man, and no one understands him but his one more. Shut up, chef. Oh. Come on, the birthday line. Hello. Hello. I would like to wish my husband, Abby Bryant, a happy birthday. Who? Albert Bryan. Who, this Gene? No, this is Dorothy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, Dorothy. I'm just kidding. I do that with you. I do that with you. <laughs> okay. Okay, we well, tell him we said happy birthday. Okay. All right, bye. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Don't get that one. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, wait a minute. Huh? Are you going to do the, are you doing the Luther Ingram thing tomorrow? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing it. I, I'm, I'm going to have on my best clothes. Oh, you're going to dress up tomorrow? I'm going to dress up tomorrow. Uh, this is a fundraiser for one Luther Ingram. Kidney. Kidney. N that to try to get some of these bills paid that is mounted up so big. Mm. Mr. Rufus Thomas, and who else is going to be there? William Bell. Barquez. Barquez. Yeah. It's going uh, pretty good. I don't know, but they, they, are, they are here. Before we left Memphis, we got a chance to see Rufus perform at a special concert and launch a new CD. Hey! I appreciate it so much. Okay. Son. You doing all right? Doing good. Man. I feel just like I look. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Can I get you, please? I have to do that to another bag. No, when I first met Rufus, I was, I was uh, doing a show at the at the uh, fairground, I was much younger. And, and I had the dubious honor of introducing him on a show one night at the fairground. And as I said, I had never met him. I was just out there. And, and I walked out on stage and I saw this very damper gentleman standing behind stage waiting to come on. And I, and I said to the crowd, you know, when, when I get old, I want to be just like this man right here. <laughs> I, I want to be just like him, old and ugly. <laughs> and, he, and he gave me a look on that stage that night, and I thought, okay, so this is Rufus Thomas. <laughs> and lo and behold, uh, two or three months 
months later, we're working together. And, and we stayed together. I guess Rufus worked for three or four months. <laughs> you know, free of charge. He was just coming in, having a great time. Longer than that. Was it longer than that? Uh, a whole year. A whole year. He worked a year for free. <laughs> and, and then the boss looked at me, and the boss looked at me and said, well, are you paying him? <laughs> I said, no. I thought you was paying him. <laughs> he said, well, we got to pay him. Why? And I said, I said, why? He's having fun. <laughs> Why you want to waste money on it? <laughs> <laughs> if you want to do something with the money, give me a raise. <laughs> Let me pay you. Now, look, Rufus is not the only one here tonight, and uh, it was acknowledged earlier. Carla Thomas. Sweet, wonderful Carla. Great to see you with me right now. It's a song, my very first solo recording.
right, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to present to you all one of the most talented persons I know in this whole wide world. Well, naturally, I feel that way, because he's my dad, Mr. Rufus Thomas. Let's hear it, y'all. Walking the dog, walking the dog. Don't know how to do it. Show you how to walk the dog. Ask my mama for 15 cents. See that elephant jump at this. Jump so high, he touched the sky. Never got back till the fourth of July. Walk in the dark. Walk in the dark. Don't know how to do it. Show you how to walk the dog. Mary, Mary, quite the trail. Tell me how does your garden grow? You got silver bell. Got cockle shell, pretty maids all in a row. The walk in the dark, walk in the dark. Don't know how to do it, show you how to walk the dog.
that we can gather here together today and bless each and every one. Amen. 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 <coughs> I was a seamstress. I sewed them and I made all these clothes. Oh, yeah. Aren't I colorful? Very colorful. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is old. This is old. What yeah. do they call it? Retro. Now it's very in again. This is, uh, this is... I don't know what kind of material it is. Depressed. It looks good. I like See, it. I tried to make him thing because when he goes overseas, he's doing that to iron. They won't get wrinkled. And, and you don't have to wash anything but the drawers. She's, she's a good lady, very good lady. She said, I'll take care of it. In the hospital, she said, I'll take care of it. I had triple bypass. And she'd been there ever since. Every day, I think maybe one one day, maybe, and every day she's been right there. That's why I'm looking so good and charming now. See, charming goes along with good. I mean, they let's face it. Either you is or you ain't. Either you can or you can't. Either you will or you won't. Either you do or you don't. Now that's the the whole crux of the whole thing. Whole thing. <laughs> Hear the whistle, it's ten o'clock. Time to rock. I'm so glad I got you here. Don't let go. Don't let go. from here to here. Snakes, we open for chickens, we open for midgets. Yeah, we open for a midget. We open for wannabe uh, Elvises. I mean, I couldn't believe. And uh, the, the, the go back to, then we, we opened a show one time and we had a um, uh, uh, midget uh, transvestite. Well, I wouldn't stop. A million bucks. I love it so. Just hold me tight and don't tell me. I want my Rogers! I want my Rogers! I'll be back!
walking up the side of the hill. Stop for a million bucks. I got to slow, just hold me tight and don't let go. Oh, 